And we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, also with you. Well, good morning to everyone online, and to we few in church. It is that situation once again. No apologies. It uh, was the right time and the responsible thing to do. However, we do light the Paschal candle as we have been, and uh, reminder that we are one in Christ, and perhaps on this day at the end of the week of prayer for Christian unity, we remember also our brothers and sisters in other churches, most of whom will be doing the same as we and meeting online, and among those remembering especially the United Reformed Church here in Repton and those of other churches who live in our benefice. And we declare together as we say, we have gathered together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit and strengthened by sharing God's gifts, we may give ourselves to the service of God and all people. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. In that light, let us confess our sins, saying together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we pray, we hear the collect for this third Sunday of the season of Epiphany. God of all mercy, your Son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit, and set all your people free to praise you, in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Father, Lord of all creation, our opening hymn. Thank you, Abby.
The first reading is from Genesis chapter 14, beginning at verse 17. After his return from the defeat of Chedar Loamah and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abram gave him one-tenth of everything. The second reading is from Revelation 19, beginning at verse 6. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, like the sound of mighty thunder peals crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. The angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are true words of God. And I fell down at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading from the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine, after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And 
Now may I speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do sit. Thank you. A wonderful story from our Lord's life, but why does he produce 120 gallons of great wine? To find the answer and what it means to us in our faith, we need to look beneath the surface, for that is where the truth lies. We might see one thing happening, but we can be certain that is superficial, and beneath there is a gold mine of godly things we can tap into. John himself interprets the power that Jesus showed in Cana as a revelation of God's glory. A need had been answered, something had been provided, a want supplied, and with a generosity that took people by surprise. That's the way God works. We ask him for our need to be met, and he gives us not just the cake, but the icing on top as well. That's the glory of God, bigger, better, brighter than anything we might have expected. Because some, sometimes God deals in quantity, but always he deals in quality. If we could only focus on that truth more often, our lives would be bigger, better, and brighter. We may not be wealthier, we may not have a fuller church, but we would be spiritually richer beyond our wildest dreams. And our church, a more influential spiritual powerhouse in the midst of our communities. I'm not allowed to sing, otherwise I would burst into song. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. So goes the children's hymn and for adults as well. It tells us of God's power, his might. But at Cana, Jesus showed that God's power is not just for the big things in life, also for the smaller things, even wine at a local marriage in a small place. God is certainly unusual. How many other gods would concern themselves with such things. Remember this is Jesus' first miracle, the first time during his ministry that was to only last for three short years, used the power vested in him to do an extraordinary thing. You might have expected him to do something big, an act of healing of a prominent person the raising of someone from the dead, or the stilling of a storm. Those, of course, are all in the pipeline and will come to fruition before his mission is complete. But Mary, who must have spent the 30 years of Jesus growing up wondering just exactly what it was that Jesus was going to do, and knowing just how full of the power of God he was, was inspired at that moment to encourage him to come out of his shell, to let it be known, to reveal just who he is. Reluctant he was, however he did, and the Son of God was revealed at a wedding reception at a party for friends. No COVID restrictions there. While it appears to be unworthy of what he was and is, in another sense, making wine out of water could not have been more appropriate. After all, Jesus had come to earth, God among us, to experience our human life on every level, in every different way. He had come to show us that following God was not just a duty, obeying a set of laws, but a joy living a life of loving God, of one another and ourselves. Why not then ensure that such a joyful occasion as the marriage of a man and woman be made all the more joyful 
by using God's power when there was a need. If you read, look, and consider the remaining years of Jesus' ministry and all the things he did, there are a great variety of uses of God's power. Sometimes he upset those in authority. Sometimes he shared truths that were uncomfortable for people to hear. Sometimes he had to be quite forceful. But through it all, Jesus spent a lot of his time encouraging his disciples, repeatedly urging them forward, giving them confidence in themselves and about what lay ahead. This, of course, was not just confined to the twelve. For all the time, there were other disciples around, as well as many on the edge who would have been party to what was going on. And they all would have been caught up by the charisma of this man who encouraged them to be of good cheer, not to be afraid of anyone or anything, because if they were with God, then God was with them. And they had nothing to fear as a result. Jesus's was an upbeat message. His was a life that nurtured joy and never killed it. He had an openness of spirit that could enjoy a party, could accept the hospitality of people regarded by the religious authorities as sinners. And he introduced a freedom that could reinterpret hard-line religious laws and guidelines that kept people, God's people, enslaved. And that freedom, of course, is the commandment to love. On all counts, Jesus was a beautiful person to be with, changing the world for the better and changing people for the good. Why do so many people today believe the Christian life is dull, boring, irrelevant, restrictive? The answer is complex, but three thoughts. Firstly, the church and, for centuries, religious authorities have allowed our faith to slip back into something that speaks more of don't do this and don't do that than it does of release, of enjoyment, of fulfillment, of hope, of peace, of happiness, of freedom, of love. Secondly, where the church is, and I don't mean at this particular moment in time, but where the church is and where people are is often so far apart that it's almost too far to draw the two together. Hence the calls to take our faith out there into the real world. Hence the process started by our diocese to re-examine how we are relevant to people, how we show the good news in the life of our churches, how we organize our worship that others may want to become included, to join us. There is a lot of work yet to be done. And thirdly, we ourselves must carry some of the blame. For how often do we fail to allow that Spirit of God to sufficiently change us that we might glow within with the light of God's love? And glowing within, so allow that glow to shine out to others, to draw them as the moth to the flame. If we allow God's Spirit to work in our lives as fully as God wishes, we will be filled with joy and deep inner peace, with all of God's gifts. Even acceptance of this present situation, whatever that may hold for us, we can still have hope for the future. That is what God gives us. 
But all too often, and I include myself, we can be a pale imitation of Christ, lacking in joy or peace or goodwill or hope, those good gifts of God. And yet we expect God to use us as his tools for mission. We must pray. We must turn to God. We must allow God to use us. For we are his hands here on earth. The glory of God that shone out in the life of Jesus was all of those gifts of God in their fullness. Jesus shone brightly with that glory and many were called to him. Mother Teresa shone with the light of loving compassion and care for those who had least. Terry Waite shone with the strength of deep inner certainty in his faith that sustained him through those long days of solitary confinement. Brother Roger of Teze shone with the deep inner peace of a man whose life was given to reconciling people to God. And our lives can shine with different aspects of God's glory. And we can look forward to the time when in heaven we will shine with all of God's glory, the fullness of his power, his love, his joy at work within us. But in the meantime, we are called to dedicate our lives fully to God. Allow that spirit free reign in our lives, learning the living word of the Bible, drawing closer to God in prayer, that we might become more Christ-like day by day. And what better time is there to do this than lockdown? And as we grow in faith, so will our lives shine more and more with God's love. People will be attracted to us because they will sense, even if we only meet them on the phone or over the internet, they will sense that here is a person within whom God is alive. And when we meet again as a church, as a gathered people, so people will be drawn to us, to our worship. Not so much by our own efforts, but by the work of the Spirit and the glory of God as shown in what we are, what we say, and very importantly, what we do. How did Jesus draw people to himself? How did he show God to others? How did he share the good news? He never left a situation without having had an impact, without having improved it in some way for people, whether by healing, by teaching, by raising the dead, calming the storm, righting a wrong, helping the helpless, encouraging those without hope, bringing joy to the heartbroken. Setting free the imprisoned by loving people. Always making life better and brighter for those whom he met. Is it so with us today? Do we always make a positive difference to those we live amongst and have contact with as we journey through our daily lives? If we don't, then we're not yet fully living as Christ wants us to live. If we do, then praise be, for we are revealing the glory of God to the world. And if we are unsure whether we do or we don't, then perhaps we need to pray and try a little bit harder and see just what God can do with us if we allow him to. In Jesus' name, amen.
We are coming to the end of the week of prayer for Christian unity, the theme of which has been abiding in Christ. This will be the theme of our intercessions this morning. Let us pray. God of love, through Christ you said to us, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You seek us, you invite us to receive your friendship and abide in it. Teach us to respond more deeply to this invitation from you and to grow in a life that is ever more complete. Turn our water into wine that we might be those who can be channels of your love and grace among those whom we meet. We pray for Martin and those who enable our worship week by week. We pray for Nick, training for ordination, and Sarah as she continues her ministry in the church in Bosnia. We pray for our brothers and sisters at the URC and lift up to you Graham Maskery, who is shielding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you have created every human being in your image and likeness. We give you praise for the gifts of our many cultures, expressions of faith, traditions and ethnicities. Help us not to be afraid of our differences, but to rejoice in them. Grant us the courage always to stand against injustice and hatred based on race, class, gender, religion, and fear of those who are not like ourselves. We pray for Joe Biden and his administration as they seek to heal divisions within their nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you come, came into the world and shared fully in our humanity. You know the hardships of life for people who suffer in so many different ways. May the spirit of compassion move us to share our time, life and goods with those in need. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of others. Help us not to become blind to their needs, but rather to be open to the prompting of your spirit. We thank you for the ways you are prompting people to look out for others during the current COVID crisis and recent floods, for their offers of practical help and friendship. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, you hear the groaning of our wounded creation and the cries of those already suffering from climate change. Guide us towards new ways of being. May we learn to live in harmony as part of your creation. Give wisdom to those in government and those who work for the various agencies to help alleviate the problems caused through climate change. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Jesus calls us to abide in him as branches of the true vine. He calls us to bear the fruit of God's healing and reconciling love. He calls us to draw closer to God and to one another as we offer this love to the world. We pray for doctors, nurses and all, all healthcare workers who tirelessly seek to heal and help those afflicted. Keep safe all those who put themselves at risk to care for the sick, to sustain them, help and protect them. Lord, we ask you would help to restore their hope. And we lift before you in our hearts 
those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you those who have died, praying particularly for Maggie and her family and friends. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to sharing the peace. We have our seasonal words as an introduction, a reminder that Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share peace one with another. Peace to everybody online. I'm sure you can share peace with everybody else as well. Peace be with you. Peace, peace. Excellent. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine in your church to gathered today. Our offertory hymn. Thank you, Abby.
we offer our gifts, we declare, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We turn to the Eucharistic prayer responses in the order of service. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Redeeming God, we cannot keep silent because your vindication of your people shines out like the dawn and your salvation like a burning torch. You renew the nature of creation by the grace of your saving power. Though your children wander far from your ways, you call us a crown of beauty and a royal diadem in your hand. In the death of your son, we showed you the depth of our estrangement. But in his resurrection and ascension and the coming of your spirit, you showed us the height and breadth of your love. And so we thank and praise you with the company of heaven, joining in the song of your boundless glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, in your Holy Spirit, you empower us with gifts of wisdom and knowledge and faith and healing and miracles and prophecy and revelation and discernment. Send that Spirit upon us now that your world may see your divinity through our humanity. Sanctify this bread of humility and wine of joy, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of justice and mercy, as at Cana the wine was good, bless your whole creation. As at Cana the wine ran short, be close to all who know their need of you. As at Cana the wine ran out, succor those living in the midst of death and dying in the midst of life. As at Cana, you saved the best till last. Flood this earth with the wine of your kingdom, that justice may roll down like a river and righteousness like a never-failing stream until we see you face to face and recognize our diverse faces in the face of your Son, through whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
As this bread is broken, so may we be broken. As Christ was broken and resurrected, so may we be made whole. So let us draw near with faith to receive all that God offers us through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us share together in remembrance that Christ died and lives for us today and be fed by his spiritual gifts freely offered us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. For those at home, I commend to you the prayer to be said as we share the bread and wine, that you too may share in the gifts of God that are part of our communion. broken for me. The blood of Christ shed for us all. And we pray together. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end, behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God for ever and ever. Amen. So we come to our notices, and uh, I draw your attention to one or two things, if I may. I've got some little notes around as well, um, written all over mine, so I need to just run through those. Firstly, uh, well done on the uh, messy church Christingle that took place. Uh, It wasn't uh, announced out loudly, uh, but a collection of a hundred pounds emerged from that service that took place uh, quite a long time ago now, uh, which was sent to the Children's Society. So thank you to everyone for your generosity uh, in giving to that need. Charities, of course, are 
desperate for support at this time. So if you are able to consider that, then please do so. Um, I will come back to you about Ash Wednesday, uh, what we might do then. That has been rather overtaken by the developments uh, of the last couple of days. More about that in a moment. Those who've passed the church uh, will have joined me in shock and horror at what the porch looks like. Uh, it looks like something out of a zombie film, to be quite honest, uh, where people are protecting themselves against hordes of zombies. It's quite atrocious. However, it is necessary, um, health and safety and security and all those different reasons, and it is for a very short time and a good purpose. I do have to say a very big thank you. She'll hate me for this, Virginia. Virginia Davis, who worked tirelessly to raise money. Another £4,000 grant came in this week. Uh, so we hope that basically the cost is virtually covered. So wonderful stuff, Virginia. Thank you so much for not only that, but for pushing through uh, with the organizing committee, the church and uh, churchyard committee. Thank, thank you so much for ensuring that work is done and takes place with as little impact as possible. There is um, a note about Vicar's Leave. I'm sorry that's confused a lot of people who thought I was going on this weekend. I write the notices with Sunday in mind. So when I said, from the end of this week, I meant from the end of this week that we've just started, not the week that you read it in, which was the Thursday uh, week. So sorry about the confusion. So yes, from the end of this coming week, I will be on leave for two weeks, and David will be taking these services, and thank you to David for that. With that in mind, thank you especially to Stephen, sat at the back there quietly. Remember, uh, almost a year ago now, uh, we were faced with the situation of having to produce these services over Zoom to stream them out and so on. And Stephen has walked a, a very rocky path at times trying to make the thing work and to get the technology and everything in place and functioning as it should. And I hope that most of the glitches are now things of the past. Um, there will be things that we can't count against, but there we are. He has done so very, very well with a lot of hard work. I would wish that more people joined us. And reflecting about that, I was wondering whether or not the, the difficulties we faced in the early days of setting up the system actually put some people off. Uh, so next week I will include in the newsletter a little appeal to people, if they haven't tried it or haven't been with us for a while, to do so. However, I'm also aware that we could improve how we do things. And I want feedback, please. If you have ideas on how we can make this work that little bit better, then please do drop a little note to me in an email in the next few days, and then we can feed that through and begin to work at it with things that are appropriate. So please do give us feedback. We don't have all the answers ourselves, is what I'm saying. And if you have worshipped, perhaps online with other churches, and seen something that was really good, then please do let me know, and we will do what we can, as I said. I think that's probably it for today, in the notices front. Other than please do continue to pray for the situation there seems to be a little bit of a turning around happening, but we know that we must not count our chickens before they hatch. But let us pray and receive God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all that you have given us during this time together, for all that you give us during our daily lives. We pray that as your son changed water to wine, through his example, through the working of your spirit, you may change the water of our humanity into the wine of your saving love. Fill our lives with that spirit. Fill what we do, what we say, what we think, what we are, 
with your heavenly love that we may truly be your people and play our role in helping to build your kingdom here on earth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Christ is the King, O oh friends rejoice. Thank you. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.